Today we're going to be learning about the angles of a triangle. We're going to start off by looking at the interior angles of a triangle, the sum of the interior angles of a triangle. What we're going to start off by doing is I want you to take a separate piece of paper and I want you to draw any triangle on that piece of paper with a ruler. Make sure that it is nicely straight, okay? But you can draw any triangle that you want. It doesn't have to have any specific dimensions, but you draw a triangle and then once you've drawn that triangle, I want you to take your scissors and to cut that triangle out. Okay, so I've drawn my triangle and I'm also going to cut out my triangle over here. And once we've cut this triangle out, try and make sure that you cut it out as neatly as possible on the lines because this won't work so well if you have got skew lines and so on okay once you've cut your triangle out i want you then to label inside the corners or the angles of your triangle the letters a b and c so i'm going to put over here a here i will put b and here i will put c so those are the three angles of my triangle. Now your triangle would undoubtedly look different to mine and that's perfectly fine because this works with any triangle. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to look and see what happens if I take each of those angles and I put them together next to each other so that the corners are all together. So I'm going to take this one, I'm going to tear it off and you do this as well with your triangle. So we tear that off, we take the next, uh, that was A, now I'm going to do B. I'm going to tear that off like that and then I'm going to take C and I'm going to tear it off as well like that. And then let's have a look and see what happens if I take all of those and I put them next to each other so the points are all together like this. Let's put this one nicely on the line over there. And you should find that when you put them all together like that it forms a perfectly straight line over here okay now we learned when we were learning about the different types of angles that an angle that is on a straight line like this if you have an angle like this on a straight line we learned that that angle is called a straight angle and it is 180 degrees so if i've got the three corners of my triangle like this all putting if I put them together and they all make a straight line then that would indicate that all of these angles together make 180 degrees like the angle on a straight line over there so what this is telling me is that the angles of my triangle the interior angles of my triangle if I add them up I will get 180 degrees and remember I said this will work with any triangle that you can get it doesn't matter what triangle you're using it will always work so what we can say over here is if I have a triangle so you can stick that down okay if I have a triangle like this doesn't matter what my triangle looks like because remember it'll work no matter what if I have a triangle ABC then what I can say is angle A plus angle B plus angle C will equal 180 degrees. Always, that will always happen. And any time when we are doing geometry, which is now the section we're busy with, any time you make a statement, so this is a statement, I, I'm given this triangle, and I can say, based on what I see over there, I can say angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180 degrees. That's a statement. Any time I make a statement in geometry, I have to give a reason for that statement. So a reason, any time you say something like this, where you're saying that the interior angles of your triangle add up to 180 degrees, your reason will be this sum, meaning we're adding it up, sum of the interior angles, this is, the symbol over here means angle, okay, of triangle, and then we label the triangle we're working with. So in this case, it's triangle ABC. 
Okay, so I can say that angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180 degrees because if I add up the interior angles of triangle ABC, I will get 180 degrees because it's a triangle and every any time I add up the interior angles of any triangle, it will always add up to 180 degrees. So that is what we know about the sum of the interior angles of a triangle. So I want you to make sure that you stick your triangle corners down in a nice straight line like that, like they should form. And make sure that you have this down because this is something we're going to be using a lot. Okay, and then we're going to go on and do an example. So in this example, we have now been told that we need to determine the size of X. Okay, so over here I have got X. I need to figure out what the size of X is. Now obviously this is going to be an angle, so it's going to be something in degrees. I need to work out what the size of X is. Okay, so let's have a look at how we would do this question. Okay, so first of all, this is what my diagram looks like. I've got angle A, angle B, angle C. I've been told that angle B is 80 degrees. Angle C is 45 degrees and X is at angle A. And I need to work out what size X is. So using what we learned over here, that the sum of the interior angles of the triangle will always equal to 100, equal 180, I can use that to figure out what X is going to be. So what I can say is X plus 80 degrees plus 45 degrees those are the sizes of the angles, the interior angles of triangle ABC. Those must all add up to 180 degrees. So what I've ended up over here with now is an equation which I will be able to solve. But remember I said any time you make a statement in geometry you have to give a reason for it. So over here I've made a statement. I've said that this is equal to that. Uh, if I add up three, these three angles it will equal 180 degrees. How do I know that? The reason I know that is because the sum of the interior angles of triangle, in this case it's also triangle ABC, must equal 180 degrees. Okay, so there's my reason. Now we can go and solve. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve my equation like I normally would. So I'm going to take anything that's not x and get rid of it on the left-hand side. So I've got x equals 180 degrees minus 80 degrees minus 45 degrees. And then we need to solve that. Okay, so 180 minus 80 minus 45 is going to be 55 degrees. So now I can say, therefore, x is equal to 55 degrees. Take note, over here, I don't have to give reasons because all I'm doing is I'm solving the equation that I set up, which already gave a reason for. I'm not giving any new information. I'm using information that I've already put there, and I'm just solving that equation. Okay, so I don't need to give any more reasons over here because it's not a new statement. Okay, so that's how you would do a question like that, where you've been given a triangle, you've got angles inside that triangle, you have to work out what the size of one of those angles is, and you've been given the other two sizes. Remember, any time you've got a triangle, the interior angles of that triangle will always add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to work on for yourself. So the first one over here, you've got triangle ABC again. This time you're working out the size of A over here. Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute to determine the size of A or the value of A.
Okay, so let's see how you did, did with that question. So, over here we've got our triangle, it's triangle ABC, and we have been told that angle B, the size of it is A, and we have to work that out. We've been told that angle A is 75 degrees, and angle C is 40 degrees. So the first thing we're going to do is, just like we did in the previous question, for question A now, we are going to write down a statement that is going to give us an equation that we can work with. Okay, so over here, I can say A plus... 75 degrees plus 40 degrees equals 180 degrees. And the reason I know that is because the sum of the interior angles of any triangle, and in this case it is triangle ABC, will always equal 180 degrees. Okay, so now once I've got that, I can then go and solve my equation. So I've got A equals 180 degrees minus 40 degrees minus 75 degrees. And now I need to solve that. So that's going to give me 180 minus 40 minus 75 is 65 degrees. And that's what we end up with for A. So therefore, A is equal to 65 degrees. Okay, so now I'm going to give you another one that you're going to do for yourself. So in question B, this time you've got triangle DEF. Okay, and you need to work out the size of B. And I'm going to give you one minute to work on this one again. Okay, so let's see how that went. So for question B, this time we're working with triangle DEF. Now you need to know that the square over here means that angle D is 90 degrees. Okay, so they have given you the size of that angle. They've told you that angle F is 30 degrees. We need to work out angle E, which is B. So B plus 90 degrees plus 30 degrees equals 180 degrees. So now we need to work out what B is equal to. But first, what is my reason? Remember, anytime you make a statement in geometry, you have to give a reason. So our reason is going to be the sum of the interior angles of, in this case, it is triangle DEF. Okay, so that is my reason that I can say that. That's how I know that when I add those up, I will get 180 degrees. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for B. So I'm going to take my 90 and my 30, get rid of them on the left-hand side. So I've got B equals 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 30 degrees. And then I can say, therefore, B is equal to 60 degrees. So that's what you should have got for question B. Okay, let's have a look at question C. In question C, we have got triangle PQR, and this time we have been told to find the value of X, but here you've got X here and you've got X there, okay? But it doesn't matter because you're still going to be able to solve for X when you put all three of those together and add them up and make them equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so now I'm going to give you another minute to solve this problem.
Okay, so let's see how that question went. So for question C, here we have got triangle PQR. We know that Q and R are both X and angle P is 75 degrees. We need to work out what X is equal to. So just like I had in the previous one, I'm just going to add up all three of those angles. So I've got X plus X plus 75 degrees equals 180 degrees. Because when I add up the interior angles of any triangle, it will always total 180 degrees. And my reason is that the sum of the interior angles of, in this case, it is triangle PQR, will always be 180 degrees. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and solve this. So I'm going to take the 75 across, so I've got X plus X equals 180 degrees minus 75 degrees. So 2X is equal to 105 degrees, which means that X is equal to half of that. Now, when you divide this in half, 105 divided by 2, we're going to get 52.5 because obviously 105 is an odd number. Okay, so that's 52.5. Now, we don't normally write this for things like angles. We don't normally write it as 52 and a half. I'm going to write it in decimal form like this. So 52.5 degrees. So that is the size of angle X, 52.5 degrees. So that's what you should have got for question C. And then the last one, before we go on to the next thing that we need to do, is question D. Okay, so now in question D, again, this is a little bit more advanced, but it's still exactly the same concept. We're still going to make all of the angles equal to each other, or add them all up and make them equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to give you a minute again to solve this problem. Okay, so let's see how that question went. So in this one, we had triangle X, Y, Z, and we were told that, that angle X is 2A, angle Y is A plus 20 degrees, and angle Z is A. So we haven't been told the actual size of any of these angles, but it's fine, because when I make an equation out of this, with the knowledge that I have that all angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, I will be able to get an equation that I'll then be able to solve and work out what A is. Okay, so my equation is going to look like this. 2A plus A plus 20 plus A. So I'm adding up all three of them. It doesn't matter what order we do it in, but so long as we add all three of them up, equals 180 degrees. And my reason, again, like it has been for all of the other examples, is that the sum of the angles in the triangle, the interior angles in the triangle, equals 180 degrees. So I can say over here, the sum of the interior angles of triangle X, Y, Z. You see that every time I am labeling the name of the triangle, okay, if you haven't been given labels, then you can just say of triangle. But if you have been given labels, you need to get used to labeling that triangle, specifying what triangle you're talking about. Because as we get onto more advanced examples, you're going to have questions where you have more than one triangle in the question. Then you have to specify which triangle you're talking about. So it's always a good idea to get used to doing that now. Okay, so now I'm going to go and solve my equation. So I've got 2a plus a plus another a equals 180 degrees 
minus 20 degrees. Okay, so now this gives me 4a equals 160 degrees. So when I divide by 4 on both sides, I end up with 40 degrees for a. So now I know that the value of a is 40 degrees. Now that is all they asked me to work out. They asked me to determine the values of the unknowns. So I haven't been asked to work out the size of angle x, the size of angle y, the size of angle z. All I've been asked to work out is the value of a. If I was asked to work out the size of angle x, I would do this. I would say, therefore, angle x is equal to 2 times a, so that's 2 times 40 degrees using substitution, and that would give me 80 degrees. Or angle y is equal to 40 degrees, a plus 20 degrees equals 60 degrees. Okay, so we use substitution to work out any individual angles if we were asked for that. But we haven't been asked for it, so in this case we don't need to worry about that. So that's just extra information for if you ever get asked something like that. Okay, right, the next thing we're going to go on to is the exterior angle of a triangle. So now we know that the interior angles of a triangle all add up to 180 degrees. Now let's have a look at what happens when we have something called the exterior angle of a triangle. Okay, so the exterior angle of a triangle happens when you have a triangle and one of the sides of that triangle has been extended. In other words, it's been drawn longer. Okay, so if I have my triangle like this, and then one of the sides has been drawn so that it's longer. It doesn't stop at the, end, at the corner over there, it carries going. Okay, then the angle that we get over here, in between the triangle and that extended line, that is what we call the exterior angle. Okay, so the exterior angle is always that angle that you get when you draw one of the lines, or one of the sides of the triangle and you extend it. It's drawn so that it goes beyond just the triangle itself. And the exterior angle is the angle that results from doing that between the triangle itself and that angle. Note, it is not this angle over here. That is not the exterior angle. It is the angle between the triangle and that line over there, that extended line. It's not the straight angle over there. Okay, so now let's have a look at what happens when we do that. What happens with the size? Okay, so if we have a triangle like this, where we have got an exterior angle, okay, now you could do this by drawing it and cutting it out and so on, but in this case, I'm just going to show it to you. Okay, so say we have a triangle ABC and one of the lines from B to C has been extended beyond C like this. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to go and we're going to sh uh, tear off angles B and A. We're not going to do anything with angle C, which is where the exterior angle it is. We're doing the opposite angles, the angles that are not next to the exterior angle, the angles that are opposite, the opposite interior angles. They're opposite where the exterior angle is. Okay, I'm going to take those and I'm going to see what happens when I do this. If I take this one and I put it over here, and I take this one and I put it over here, you'll see that angles A and B, the two that were over here, fit perfectly into that exterior angle. Now what that means for us is that if I add these two angles up, it's exactly the same size as my exterior angle. Okay, so what we're going to do over here is we're just going to write a little bit of a rule for ourselves. Okay, so what I can say is if I have an exterior angle like this, if this is A, and this is B, and this is C, can't see that very well, but if that is C, now this can be called C1 and C2, just to make it easier for you to label the angles, okay? Then, if C2 is my exterior angle, okay, this is how I would label that angle. If I've been given a little number inside, it makes it easier for me to label that angle, because now I've got two angles at the point C. So I've got this one and I've got that one. So I've been told this one I can label C2. So angle C2 is equal to the sum of angles A and B. 
Okay, so that is what I can now deduce based on what I just did over here. That if I take this angle and I take that angle, they fit perfectly into that exterior angle. Okay, so the exterior angle is the same as the sum of those two opposite interior angles. Okay, so this over here, our reason for being able to say this will be the exterior angle of triangle ABC. Okay, so what we're doing over here is anytime you get a triangle where one of the sides has been extended, so you end up with an exterior angle, you can use the fact that that exterior angle is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles. So not the one that is right next to, the other two. Okay, so if I add those two up, it'll be equal to the exterior angle. Okay, so now we're going to practice using that for a few problems. In our first example over here, we have got triangle ABC, and we have to work out the size of X. Now, X is over here, so it is the exterior angle. You can see that the line BC has been extended to give me this line over here, and now I have this angle that has formed between the extended line and the triangle, giving me this exterior angle, which has been called X. Okay, so now I've been told what the size of these angles is. So what I can do is I can use my rule that says that the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles. Okay, so let's go and do that. So in this example, this is the triangle that I'm working with over here. I've got triangle ABC. I've got angle A is 80 degrees, angle B is 30 degrees, and the X is my exterior angle over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by saying X equals always try and put the variable that you're trying to solve for on the left hand side of the equation so if you're trying to solve for what is in here then write it the other way around say this plus that equals that but because i'm trying to solve for this one i'm writing this on the left hand side this equals that plus that so that equals 30 plus 80 or 80 plus 30 doesn't matter which way around and the reason, again, this is geometry, I have to give a reason for any statement that I make. So my reason is that the exterior angle of my triangle, in this case it is triangle ABC, will be equal to the opposite interior angles. Okay, the sum of the opposite interior angles. And that gives me 80 plus 30 is 110 degrees. Okay, so that's how we use the exterior angle of a triangle. So now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to practice this for yourself. So the first one, we've got question A over here. You've got triangle ABC. You have to work out the value of A over there. I'm going to give you one minute to determine the value of A. Okay, so let's see how that question went. Okay, so in this example, we had triangle ABC, and we have been told that angle A in that triangle is 75 degrees, angle B is 25 degrees, and we need to work out the value of A, which is at angle C, or which is at point C over here. It's not the angle inside the triangle, it is the angle outside the triangle, it's the exterior angle. Okay, so what we're gonna do for question A, is use what we know about the exterior angle of a triangle saying that the exterior angle 
is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles. So I'm going to say I'm trying to work out A, so I want A to be on the left-hand side of my equation. That equals 25 degrees plus 75 degrees. And the reason I can say that is because it is the exterior angle of my triangle. A, B, C. Okay, now I can go and solve this. And really, it's very simple to solve. All I have to do is add those up. So 25 plus 75 is 100 degrees. So now I can say, therefore, A is equal to 100 degrees. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question A. Now I'm going to give you question B. Okay, so in this one, you've got triangle DEF. You have to work out the value of B for this one. Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute to solve this. Okay, so let's see how question B went. So in this example, you have got triangle DEF. You've been told that angle D is 90 degrees. You've been told that angle F outside the triangle, so the exterior angle at F is 155 degrees, and you have to work out the value of B. Now, like I said, we want to try and make sure that our variable is on the left-hand side of our equation. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put this plus that on the left hand side of the equation equal to the exterior angle. So B plus 90 degrees equals 155 degrees. Okay, and that my reason I can say is exterior angle of triangle, in this case it is triangle DEF. Okay, so now we're just going to go and solve for B. So I'm going to take my 90 degrees. I don't want it over here. I'm going to get rid of it. So that means B is equal to 155 degrees minus 90 degrees. So therefore, B is equal to 65 degrees. And that's what you should have got for question B. Right, now question C. In this one, you've got triangle PQR. You need to work out the value of X. I'm going to give you one minute to work this out. Okay, so if, let's go and look at this one over here. So for question C, we have to work out the value of X. Okay, now there are two X's over here. Angle Q is X and angle R is also X. And we've been told that the, exter the exterior angle at P is 100 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say X plus X equals the exterior angle of 100 degrees. And my reason is exterior angle of triangle PQR. 
Okay, so now that I've got that, I can go and solve for x. So this is 2x equals 100 degrees. So therefore, x is equal to 50 degrees. So now I know that each of those angles is 50 degrees. Okay, and then the last question for this section is question D. So now here you've got triangle XYZ and you have to determine the value of A. I'm going to give you one minute again to solve this. Okay, so let's go through that example. So for question D, we are trying to determine the value of A. Now we know that X is 2A, Y is A plus 20, and the exterior angle at Z is 4A. So these, if I add them up, should be equal to that. Okay, so now because I've got A's on both sides, it doesn't really matter which way around we do it. If we do this one, on the left, it'll probably work out easier for us because there's more, 4, 4a is more than 2a plus a, which will be 3a. It means we won't have a negative, but I'm going to do it the other way just so you can see what happens when we do have a negative. So 2a plus a plus 20 equals my exterior angle of 4a. And my reason for that, exterior angle of triangle x, y, z. Okay, so once I've done that, I can now go and solve for a. So now I'm going to take all my a's to my one side and everything that's not a to the other side. So I've got 2a plus a minus 4a equals negative 20 degrees. Okay, so now I end up with 2a plus a minus 4a, that's negative a equals negative 20 degrees. Now I'm going to divide by my coefficient of a, which is negative 1. So I divide by negative 1. So therefore, a is equal to positive 20 degrees. So that's what you should have got for question D. Now, like I said, if we had done it the other way around, so I had 4a equal to all of this, I wouldn't have had to worry about that negative at all. Okay. But either way, it will still work. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question D. Right, now the next thing we're going to look at is a special kind of triangle called an equilateral triangle. Now we've already touched on an equilateral triangle briefly in a previous lesson. You should know that an equilateral triangle is a triangle that has all three sides equal. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at what happens with the angles inside an equilateral triangle. So first we're going to sketch an equilateral triangle. So what you're going to need for this is a compass and you're also going to need your protractor when we are looking at the angles inside that equilateral triangle. So if you don't have those, Pause the video quickly so you can go and get them. Okay, so we're going to sketch our equilateral triangle. Now you can do any size triangle you want to. Just make sure that you keep the size of your uh, compass consistent because it will then mean that your triangle will be the same, will have the same sides all the way around. And if it, in order for it to be an equilateral triangle, it has to have the same sides, size, the same length sides all the way around. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by drawing a line like that and marking off a point which I will call A okay and then I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to at the moment I've got it at the size you could make it bigger smaller doesn't really matter so long as you keep it consistent okay so I'm going to go and put that on A and I'm going to mark off like that to see where B is going to be so this is going to be my point B over here Okay, now because an equilateral triangle has all sides equal, we're going to use 
the method for drawing a triangle where we have three known sides, okay? But all of them, I'm going to keep the, the compass the same size because they all are going to be the same length. So over here, I'm going to put my uh, the needle of my compass on B. I'm going to draw an arc like that. I'm going to do the same thing from A and draw an arc like that. So now I've got over here my point of intersection and that is going to be my point C. And then I can join up AC over here. And BC over here. And now, when I go and look at my angles, let's just check first. This should be an equilateral triangle. So over here, that is 8 centimeters. That over here is also 8 centimeters. And this one over here is also 8 centimeters. So this is an equilateral triangle. All three sides are equal to each other. So now let's go and have a look at the sizes of our angles. So if I put my protractor, with the origin on point A and the zero line sitting exactly on top of AB like that, you'll see that this angle measures at 60 degrees. Then if I go and measure angle B in the same way, then I also get 60 degrees over there. And if I measure this angle up here at C, I also get 60 degrees. Okay, so what I can say over here is angle A is 60 degrees, angle B is 60 degrees, and angle C is 60 degrees. Now, this is going to be true for any equilateral triangle. In any equilateral triangle, if the, if the sides are all equal, which is what makes an equilateral triangle, then your angles will all be equal as well, and they will all be equal to 60 degrees, because 60 plus 60 plus 60 adds up to 180 degrees. So in an equilateral triangle, I can say that angle A equals angle B equals angle C equals 60 degrees. That is what I know now about all of the interior angles in an equilateral triangle. They will always be 60 degrees. Okay, so now let's go and have a look at an example where we're going to be using all the rules that we have learned up until this point all together. Okay, so this is slightly more complicated, so let's just have a look at what's going on in this example over here. So we've got over here triangle ABC. Okay, so they've told us in this triangle that AB BC and AC are all equal to each other. So that means that ABC is an equilateral triangle. Then I've also got over here triangle ACD where this angle is X at A over there. This angle is 35 over here. And we need to determine the size of X. Okay, so now in order to do that, I'm going to have to use everything that I have learned up until this point. Okay, so let's just have a look at what we would do for this example. So first of all, I have got triangle ABC. Now I know that this is an equilateral triangle. The, the amount of information I have without knowing that would not be enough to help me to, to, to work out the size of X. I need to know more than just this 35 degrees. Otherwise, I can't work out the size of X. I don't have enough other information. But I can use the fact that this is an equilateral triangle and then say, well, I know that because it's equilateral, this angle is 60, but that's not really going to help me. This angle is 60, and that can help me. And this angle is 60, but again, that's not really... Or it could. There's more than one way of doing questions like this. Okay, so those these two could help me, but the easier way of doing it is probably to use this angle. Now, in this case, this has not been labeled with a 1 and a 2. Okay, so let's just quickly have a look at how you label angles, okay? With all the other examples we've had so far, we only had one angle at a point. So like triangle ABC, we had angle A. So if I was looking at an angle like this, I had angle Y, oh, I, and I had angle X, and if I needed to label them, I would have just, have just written angle Y, or angle X, and angle Y, 
like this, the same that I did with those ones over there, okay, where we put our little angle symbol on top of the letter, okay, but in this case, I can't just write angle A or angle C because there's more than one angle at that point that it, I could be referring to, okay, so angle A, there are actually three angles at point A that I could be referring to, so the way we do it is we say the angle is at A, but I also have to be more specific about what angle at A I'm talking about. So I'm talking about this angle, or I'm talking about that angle, or I'm talking about the whole big angle over there. And to say which one I'm talking about, I need to write something on this side and on that side to say where the line is coming from to get to the point and where it is going to from the point. So if I'm talking about this angle over here, it would be angle B, A, C. Okay, so BA is that line, and AC is that line, and they intersect at A, and that's where my angle is. Okay, if I want to talk about this angle over here, it would be angle ACD, like that. But in this case, I'm going to be talking about this angle over here. I want to know what that angle is, because that angle is, or that's the one that I can work out based on the fact that this is an equilateral triangle. Okay, and that's going to help me to work out the value of x. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to say that angle ACD is equal to 60 degrees. And the reason I know that is because this triangle ABC is an equilateral triangle. Okay, remember, I'm making a statement. And whenever I make a statement, I have to give a reason for that statement. So angle A, C, sorry, that should be A, C, B. A, C, B is 60 degrees. Okay, so now once, when you get a question like this, where there's a few things that are going on in your diagram, we're not getting to our answer straight away. Once you've worked something out, write it on your diagram. And then you can use it to work other things out. So I've worked out that this is 60 degrees, so I'm going to fill that in on my diagram. So I, know, I now know that this is 60 degrees. I can use it to work out the value of x now, okay? Don't write something down unless you have actually proved it on your page here, because otherwise you're going to get confused about what you have proved and what you haven't proved, and you can't use information that you haven't already proved yet or that you haven't been given straight out. Okay, so here I've been given this, so I can use it. I hadn't been given the fact that that was 60 degrees. I have to first prove it. So to prove it, I say angle ACB is 60 degrees, and the reason I know that is because it's an equilateral triangle, but I can't expect the examiner to know that I know that. I have to tell the examiner that I know that. So you have to write that down, okay? Once you've written it down, you can then put it on your diagram to use. Okay, so now that I've got that, I can use it to work out the size of x. Now, this may look complicated because you might think this doesn't look like an exterior angle, but if I am looking, if I cover that up and I say we're just looking at this triangle over here, ACD, then the, the 60 degrees is the exterior angle of triangle ACD where the line CD has been extended in this direction. So this over here is our exterior angle of triangle ACD. Okay, so now because it's an exterior angle, what I can do is I can say that my exterior angle is equal to the opposite interior angles. So in that triangle, the opposite interior angles will be X and 35 degrees. So now I'm looking at triangle ACD and I'm work, going to work with the exterior angle of that triangle. Okay, so I'm going to say that x plus 35 degrees equals 60 degrees, and my reason is exterior angle of triangle ACD. Okay, so now I know now I have an equation that I can solve to work out what x is. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take my 35 degrees, get rid of it on the left-hand side. That gives me 35 or 60 degrees minus 35 degrees. So therefore, x is equal to 25 degrees. So that's what you should get for that example over there. Okay, so now 
you're going to do some questions similar to this, okay, where you're going to have a combination of triangles in the questions. Again, like I said, you can't use information if you haven't been given it or you haven't proven it. Uh, proved it. So what you need to do is anything that you can prove, write it down to prove it. Now remember that there is more than one way of doing this. I could have done this question a different way. I could have done this instead. I could have said that angle BAC, so this is another way of doing, I'm going to show you the other way of doing this question. Okay, so angle BAC is equal also to angle B equals 60 degrees and this would be equilateral. triangle A, B, C. Okay, so here I was saying that one was 60. Now I'm saying these two are 60. They're all 60. I could say all three of them are equal to 60, but I'm just saying the ones that I specifically need. Okay, so if I say that those are 60, then I can work with this big triangle A, B, D, and I can use the interior angles of that triangle to work out what X is. So I can do this. I can say that 60 degrees plus 60 degrees plus x, that is that whole angle A over there, plus 35 degrees equals 180 degrees. And my reason for being able to say all of that, so this angle over here, so that was 60 over there. This is 60 plus x over here, and this is 35 over here. So if I add all of those up, it gives me 180. If I'm looking at the sum of the ang interior angles of triangle A, B, D. Okay, so now let's solve that. So I have 60 plus 60 and 35. I want to get rid of those. So that gives me X equals 180 degrees minus 60 degrees minus 60 degrees minus 35 degrees. So let's work that out. And that gives me 25 degrees. The exact same answer that I got with this method over here. So therefore, x equals 25 degrees. So there is more than one way of doing this question. And that will often happen when you have questions like this, is there will be more than one way of doing it. So the, the method that I show you isn't necessarily the only or the, o, the only correct method, okay? You could have done it a different way and you could still end up with the same answers. Just make sure that the process you're following, you're not leaving anything out and you are making sure that you're doing everything correctly. So if you, you can't jump from one thing to another without showing the step in between and so on. Okay, so now I'm going to give you your next question that you're going to work on. Okay, so here we've got triangle ABD, which is divided up into two smaller triangles, ABC and ACD. You need to determine the size of angle X. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to work this one out.
Okay, so let's go through that question. So in this one over here, we have got triangle ABD, which is our big triangle, which has been split up into two smaller triangles, ABC and triangle ACD. We have been told that angle B is X, and we need to work out the size of X. We know that angle D is 40 degrees, and this angle at A, angle DAC, is 30 degrees, and angle CAB is 65 degrees. So what we need to do is we have to work out X. Now, this one is actually... What you're going to do is you can look at this whole thing as one triangle. Now remember, this is not the only way of doing it, okay? This is probably the quickest way of doing it for this particular example. I'm going to look at this whole triangle all together, triangle A, B, D, and I'm going to look at the interior angles of that triangle and say, I know the interior angles of a triangle must add up to 180. Here I've got an interior angle is X, this one is 40, and this one is made up of two parts 65 and 30 but because I know all of those values except for x I can go and work out what x is okay so I can say x plus both of those at angle a is 65 plus 30 degrees plus 40 degrees at d equals 180 degrees and my reason that I know that is because of the interior angles or the sum of the interior angles of triangle A, B, D. Okay, so remember you have to specify what triangle you are looking at. Especially now that we have more than one triangle in our diagram, we have to specify which one we are referring to. I am looking at the interior angles of triangle A, B, D, the whole big triangle. Okay, so now I'm going to go and solve for X. So I have X equals 180 degrees minus 65 minus 30 minus 40. Okay, so therefore x is equal to 180 minus 65 minus 30 minus 40 gives me 45 degrees. So that's what you should have got for question A. Okay, question B. Right, so in this one, we've got, again, a big triangle, DEG, which has been split up into two smaller triangles, DEF and DFG. You have to determine the value of A, and I'm going to give you two minutes again to solve this. Okay, so let's see how this example went. Okay, so now in this one, again, there is more than one way of doing it. 
One of the ways of doing it is to first work out this angle by using the interior angles of triangle DEF and then use the fact they told you that those two lines are perpendicular to work out what A is. The other way to do it is to work out this angle by using the interior angles of DEG and then to use the exterior angle over here with A and that angle to work out what A is equal to. So there are two ways of doing this. I'm going to show you the first method that I told you about. Okay, so in that method, I'm first going to work out this angle over here. And to do that, I'm going to use the interior angles of triangle DEF. Okay, so I'm going to say that this angle, which I need to label because it doesn't have a name over here. So I'm going to label that angle EDF plus 50 degrees plus 75 degrees. Those are the interior angles of triangle DEF. They must all add up to 180 degrees. So the reason I know that is the sum of the interior angles of triangle DEF. Okay, so now I've got my equation and my reason. Now what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to go and solve for angle EDF over here. So angle EDF equals 180 degrees minus 50 degrees minus 75 degrees. Okay. That gives us 55 degrees. So now I know that angle EDF is 55 degrees. So what I can do now that I've worked it out, I've proved it on my paper, is I can go and write it on my diagram so that I can use it. So this is 55 degrees over here. Remember, you don't write anything on here unless you have already proved it on the paper. Okay. Now that I know that, I can use it to help me to work out the value of A. I know that this and A together make this right angle, this 90 degrees. Okay, so what I can say now is I can say that 55 plus A equals 90 degrees. And the reason I know that is because they told me that ED and DG are perpendicular to each other. Okay, so this symbol over here, what looks like an, un an upside down T, is it perpendicular. This is saying that ED is perpendicular to DG, and they gave me that information. So I say given over there. Okay, I didn't work it out. That's how I know that they are perpendicular, because they told me. Okay, so now I'm going to go and work out what A is equal to. So I'm going to take the 55 and subtract it over here, and that gives me... 35 degrees. So you should have got for A 35 degrees. Now like I said this is not the only way of solving this question but it is one way. Okay then question C. Here we've got triangle PQR which is divided up into triangle PSR and triangle QRS and we need to work out the size of X and we also need to work out the size of Y in this example. So you have two things that you need to solve for over here. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes again to solve this question.
Okay, so let's see how that question went. So in question C, here we have to work out X and we also have to work out Y. Generally, when you're given one like this, you work in alphabetical order. So I'm going to work out X first, okay, which is actually what I have to do because I can't work out Y with the information I've got so far. Okay, so if you look over here, I've been told that both of these angles over here are X. I've been told that's Y. That's not going to help me. I don't know what it is. I know that this is 85 degrees and I know that this is 100 degrees. The only thing I can do at this point is I can use this 100 degrees over here as an exterior angle of this triangle PQR where this and this are my opposite interior angles. So the 85 degrees and this X over here are the opposite interior angles for triangle PQR where 100 is the exterior angle. And I'm going to use that to work out what X is first. Okay, so X plus 85 degrees equals my exterior angle, which is 100 degrees. Okay, so now I know that because the X... Uh, the exterior angle of triangle and this triangle that I'm working with over here is PQR. Okay, so now I can go and work out what X is. So I'm going to take the 85 across, so therefore X equals 100 degrees minus 85 degrees, which gives me 15 degrees. Okay, so now I know what X is. Once I've worked that out, I can go and fill that in on my diagram, and then I can use it. So I'm putting it in both places because X is the same. No matter where it is, X is the same. So this X is 15, that X is also 15. Now I can use that to work out what Y is. Now the reason I can use it now is because now I, if I look at this triangle over here, I now have all three interior angles of that triangle, either known or the one that I'm going to work out, which is why. I know what that is. I know what that is. I have to work that one out. Okay, so now I'm going to look at triangle QRS, and I'm going to add up those three interior angles. So Y plus 15 degrees plus another 15 degrees for the two X's is equal to 180 degrees and my reason that I can do that is because those are the interior angles and when I add them up they add up to 180 degrees so the sum of the interior angles of triangle QRS okay now I'm going to go and solve for Y so I have Y equals 180 degrees minus 15 degrees minus another 15 degrees, that gives me 150 degrees. So now I know that Y is equal to 150 degrees. Okay, so then the last question for today is question D. So here I've got triangle WXZ, which has been divided up into two smaller triangles by WY, and I've got also an exterior angle over here. You need to work out the size of A, and you also need to work out the size of B in this example. So I'm going to give you two minutes again to solve this problem.
Okay, so let's go through that last example. So in this one over here, you have got 2a and a, and over here you've got a plus 10, and here you've got 2a plus 70. So we've got a whole lot of things that are using a. We've also got a b over here. Now, something you need to be aware of, when you're doing a question like this, and you need to set up an equation, you cannot set up an equation that has two different variables in it and expect to be able to solve that. You can't solve an equation, one equation, that has two different variables. So we have to make sure that our equation has only one variable in it. Okay, so I can't use A and B at the same time. I can't use the B to get A and I can't use A to the B unless I know what one of them is equal to already. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do is I need to make sure that whatever I do in this question is not going to use both a and b at the same time first okay so I can't use this angle because it has a b in it okay it's not gonna work what I need to do is I need to, I need to use the other information I've been given so over here I've been given this angle which you can see is going to be an exterior angle it's an exterior angle of that triangle it's also an exterior angle of the big triangle W X Z okay now, if I were to look at this one over here, it wouldn't really help me because I don't know what that angle is. I don't have anything for that angle. And even if I were to use angles in a straight line, which we haven't actually dealt with yet, but if I were to use it, it would still have a B in it and it wouldn't help me. So I can't use the exterior angle of that triangle. What I can do is I can use the exterior angle of the big triangle WXZ. Okay, so I can say this angle, the exterior angle, is equal to that angle, the whole angle up at W, and this angle at X over here added together. So if I add those, it will give me that angle. Now if you look at that, all of that, it has no B's in it. And this angle over here also has no B's in it, and this has no B's in it. They all have A's. So that's going to be fine, because I can solve. So long as I only have A's, I'll be able to solve my equation. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 2A plus 70. Oh, actually, I'll put this first. 2a plus a, so that's that one and that one, so that's the whole of w over there, plus angle x is a plus 10, equals my exterior angle, which is 2a plus 70. Okay, and my reason that I can do that is because this is the exterior angle of triangle WXZ. Okay, so now that I've done that, I can go and solve my equation. So now I've got 2a plus a plus a plus 10 equals 2a plus 70. I need to get all the a's on the one side, all the numbers on the other side. So I'm going to have 2a plus a plus a minus 2a equals 70 degrees minus 10 degrees. Okay, so now the two a's are going to cancel out. That gives me a plus a is 2a equals 70 minus 10 is 60 degrees. So that means that A is equal to 30 degrees. Okay, so now over here, I know that this is 30 degrees. I know that this is 2 times 30 degrees. And I know that this is 30 degrees plus 10 degrees. We need to work out what B is now. Okay, so let's have a look and see where we can work now. If I look in this triangle over here, where B is, now that I know what A is, I know what that angle is. Now that I know what A is, I know what that angle is as well, which means that I will be able to work out B using the interior angles of this triangle WXY. Okay, so now I can say that 2A, which is 2 times 30, plus A plus 10, which is 30 degrees plus 10 degrees, plus B, equals 180 degrees. So here I've added up the 2a was this 2 times 30. a plus 10 was this 30 plus 10 because remember a is 30, okay, plus b. And that all gives me 180 degrees. And the reason that I can say that is because of the sum of the interior angles of triangle WXY. And now I can go and solve and work out what B is equal to. So this is 60 degrees plus 30 degrees plus 10 degrees plus B equals 180 degrees. Take that across. So B is equal to 180 degrees minus 60 degrees minus 30 degrees minus 10 degrees. So therefore B is equal to 80 degrees. 
And that's what you should have got for question D. You should have got A is 30 and B is 80 degrees. And that is how we work with the angles in a triangle and the exterior angle of a triangle as well. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.